Y'all, this show is a train wreck that just gets messier and messier. Like, <laughs> I can't stop watching. But the last episode, we had Aubrey leave, and then it ended with one of the twins getting into it with the producers. We open up this episode, and some of the ladies are in the studio. They're re-recording all of Aubrey's vocals. It seemed like she was on all the songs, too. The vocal coach is helping Lamisha in the booth. When it's all said and done. I, I think she hit it. No, she didn't. She didn't, but bless her heart. Bless her heart. That's why, you know, there's auto-tune. I'm sure the producer is on it. I laugh every time Lamisha calls the twins Phineas and Ferb. Ha ha ha! We see twin two and twin one in the kitchen and she's telling her about her argument with the producer. And then you have Keely across from them looking a hot mess, putting her nose in the business. So now I'm guessing that she told her sister they're gonna go downstairs and double team them. We also learn about the timeline. They have a week left to finish this album. And what does Keely have in her hand? A glass of wine, just standing there doing nothing. Just listening to the twins talk. Lord, why is she in this house? Why? So the twins come downstairs in the studio while Lamisha in the booth. Twin two tells the producer, I don't want your production on any of my records. Like, it's just such an ego thing. They have a week left to finish this project and all they're doing is just holding shit up. Cosign is high as hell. That's why he's so reserved right now while she's yelling at him. He's talking so calmly to her and she's yelling at him and saying, oh, if a man was in here, you wouldn't do this to me. I'm like, calm down, calm down. Like, just have like a grown woman conversation. Like if you have a problem with this and then you have like people in the background afraid to say anything to the twins. I don't know why. So the twins are trying to make this into a sexist thing, which we all clearly see that it's not. So it's the twins and Keely, like all attacking the producer. Cosign is asking for some backup or something. And then Lamisha's like, well, I don't really know what's going on. And Keely tells her, you don't really need to. We're right. What? Girl, drink your wine. Drink your wine. As we can all see, the common denominator is thing one and thing two. She's antagonizing him right now. Like, all he needs to do is call her a bitch, and then he's in the wrong. Uh-oh, now Pam come upstairs, and she's saying in her confessional that she thinks that the common denominator is Keely because that's the one who's making all the mess in the house. Finally, Pam is speaking up, finally. It takes, what, episode seven for her to do this? Keely was saying, this ain't really a group if you have other members letting people talk to her that way, implying Pam and Lamisha wasn't backing them up. So Pam calls her out on it and says, look, what you're doing is getting under my skin. Yeah, the way Pam chewing that gum, she fed up. And they did right to be silent when she spoke. So we're back downstairs and we have 702 talking to the producer. Irish is fed up too. She said, you got the twins and Keely up there starting all the mess. And then you have the people in the middle that's just floating and not doing anything about it. Pam, Nivea, and um, Shamari. Like if they would just stand up with the girls at 702, like they're the majority. Like they could put those twins in their place, but they're not. They're gonna continue to let them wreak havoc and yell at people and ain't shit gonna be done. Just watching this stresses me out so I can only imagine being in that house. <laughs> talk yo talk, Irish. I've been in this industry since I was 12 years old. The only thing you brought to this table is a long wig. That's what I'm talking about. Get, whip the ass. They need an ass whooping. A good old fashioned, passionate ass whooping. And yes, Irish, you did sell more records than them. Everyone in that house has sold more records than them. But this TV show is all they got. So that's why they're acting a clown ass fool for $2.50. And I get the 702 girls. They kind of lacking on the vocals, but they deserve respect. And the twins, as soon as they entered this house, they were disrespectful. So I wouldn't be mad if one of the 702 girls popped twin one or twin two, because they are asking for it. 702 is so like, it's so hard to talk about them. They just diverted from this whole conversation and talking about foundation. <laughs> But I'm glad Lamisha knows that she's on camera now and applying a, a significant beat to her face because she looks good. The more I'm looking at Cosign, by the way, kind of fine. Or maybe I'm just horny. I don't know, but he looking kind of fine on that couch right now. 
So it's the next morning. You have Twin One and Keely in the kitchen complaining about their attitudes, like uh, they aggravated. Twin One trying to use this sexist narrative. No, girl, you're an effing nightmare to work with. How much they be whining for respect, they don't be giving respect to uh, anybody in the house. That's what pissed me off. And just seeing Keely's sloppy, drunk ass just makes me even more angrier because she shouldn't even be in that house. So we have all the ladies sitting on the patio and they're delegating Aubrey's parts of the songs and who's going to sing it. Nivea is very frustrated because they wouldn't have had to do this in the first place if they didn't have the environment to make Aubrey leave. So of course, Lamisha and Iris are kind of trying to vouch for Aubrey's parts because they don't have that many. And the fact that they want to say more is pissing off the twins. Okay, let's get this out of the way, thing one and thing two, about the whole age of shit that y'all been doing the entire run of this series. Y'all are like 34, 35. Lamisha, I checked, is 43. She's like eight years y'all senior. So for y'all to like say, oh, I need to respect my elders or try to like age shame them, Y'all are knocking on 40's door, as am I. So why are you trying to call them old for just being a few years over 40? Yeah, there's younger people that's calling you grandma. It's the lack of respect for me. And they just tee hee hee in that confessional. I really want Lamisha to snatch that damn wig off their head. Twin two, you ain't gonna do nothing, okay? She got one more time, one more time. All the girls want is another part. Why are y'all so pressed about that? We are only 12 minutes in. I, my blood pressure is up. Lamisha again with this Phineas and Ferb. So it's later on in the day. Twin two is in the kitchen and Keely. Lamisha comes in and like uh, ask what's going on with her because she's sitting there with a boot in her mouth. She's like nothing. And Lamisha's like, you sure? You sure is it me? Is it Cosign? She's just like, oh, well, I'm just a lot of things going on and I'm tired. <laughs> Lamisha's like, okay, well, you know, just let me know. I'm here for you. Lamisha was taunting her. She knew what she was doing. We see the 702 girls outside. Lamisha tells Iris she noticed that Twin 2 was pissed and they wondering, like, why are they angry all the time? Also, I want to know why are y'all smoking? Y'all should not be smoking. Uh, y'all are singing. <laughs> Uh, do it off camera at least. Irish is very annoyed that none of the other women besides the twins are standing up for them. I mean, all she wants is a part. Give the girl a part. I mean, throw some auto-tune on that. Who cares if they can't sing as good as some of the other ladies? You know, they're still a part of the group. This is their show just as much as the twins. I forgot they're doing that whole queen thing. I, like, Lamisha is the queen right now. Honestly, it seemed like all the women in the house are exhausted from this drama. I think the filming of this show was 30 days straight and they're on week three. I think some of these ladies are at their wits end. They really just want this to be finished. The way Irish is talking, she ready to fight. <laughs> and I don't blame her. Next scene, they go to the studio. They see that Cosign left them like a big flower bouquet and a basket of goodies. The twins don't care. They want to throw it in the trash. They want an apology face to face. I mean, I commend the producer for trying to just wave the white flag, but the twins are evil and spiteful. So of course they turn their nose up at this. Not Keely downstairs trying to get on somebody about doing work. And she just sitting there laughing with those stressed ass bangs on her forehead. All the other women are appreciative of the flowers and glad that Cosign at least trying to just make peace and get this album finished. So it's later in the evening all the ladies are gathering outside on the patio. This must be a non-music related activity they're doing. So they're coming together to release negative energy from the past. They each brought something to throw into the fire in semblance of letting it go. I feel like this scene couldn't have been in the same day. It had to be like maybe a day or two later because Lamisha has a whole different wig on. The editing in this show is sloppy. So the first one up is Keely. This chick pulls up chicken in an unmarked KFC bucket. Child, the clownery, the foolishness. Of course everyone around her laughs. And the twins are the main ones cackling, your friends. Wait, she just said, I didn't throw chicken at anybody, but the chicken was in my hand. You threw your chicken dinner at another girl in your group. That's what you did. Notori said you did it. I know Notori is watching this like, why can't this bitch leave me alone? Like, oh my goodness. I mean, 
doing something crazy like that, you, it deserves to follow you till the grave because that was ridiculous. But she now says that the reason why she threw some chicken at her is because she called her mom out her name. So she goes up to the fire and throws the bucket of chicken in it. And she can't even do that right. Like the chicken didn't even make the fire. She says she's mad that people are laughing, but your friends, the twins, are the main ones laughing at you. So the twins are letting go anger at their father for, I'm guessing, stealing from them while he was their manager. Uh, they put this all into a letter form for them to just throw into the fire. Ham is letting go her lies. And I don't mean that in a funny way. Like she wrote lies on a paper and she said that she lied to a lot of people in her life. So she's letting that, that hurt go. For the 702 girls, Irish is letting go fear of going into the studio again. Lamisha is putting leg warmers in because she's not the best dancer. <laughs> It looks like Cherish wasn't done yet. They want to burn a CD that looks like their debut album. And it signifies that she's letting go of the control the record industry had over them. Um, Shamari, why would you burn footage of Black working on their second album that never came out? I mean, that's still memories. <laughs> Especially with your other group member that's not with us anymore. Wow, like, what a mistake. I want to know who's going to clean all that out the fire. Oh, and last but not least, we have Nivea, who decides to burn a rose from her mom's funeral to signify that her mom isn't here anymore, but, you know, she carries the love of her mom in her heart. If this train wreck of a show will help anybody on this cast, it really helped Nivea, because the feedback of love to Nivea has been so positive. Hopefully, she gets her own reality show. She deserves one. Uh-oh, it looks like we got some foreshadowing from Nivea in her confessional. She's saying, you know, she's still bummed that Aubrey left and low-key, she wants to leave too. Because it looked like she's been trying to dodge the drama since day one. Like, she's just been sitting back laughing and kikiing and just trying to, like, just do the work. So it's later in the evening, half of the ladies are in the kitchen. It seems like they still have choreography to work on for the music. And Keely is trying to get some of the ladies to go rehearse. Keely in the confessional saying, yeah, I'm worried about the time crunch. Girl, first off, you ain't doing nothing. You need to worry about your drinking. That's what you need to worry about. Oh, Keely wants them to focus. Okay, I want them to eat, sleep, and breathe dance. Oh, like how you eat, sleep, and breathe alcohol? Okay. So they all agreed to go to the dance studio. Ooh, Lamisha. <laughs> I mean, don't give this girl some hard choreography. I mean, I mean, the way she was just uh, doing this dance just now with those sunglasses on and that red wig. I I've grown to like Lamisha though on this show, so I'm, I'm going to be easy on her. I mean, Shamar looked like she got this. And Irish, she, she keeping up. She's like, she, she getting it. And Lamisha, you know, she, she, she trying. She trying. Irish looks pissed. Like, she's sick of Keely, and Keely can pick up on that. No one asked Keely to fill in for their choreographer that was assigned to them. Keely, you need to mind your business. So I, I feel what Irish is saying. Now, if Irish wants your help, then yes, offer it. But Irish didn't ask for your help. And I think Keely just enjoys telling people what to do. Yeah, it looks like Lamisha and Irish is over Keely trying to tell them what to do. So that's it for the rehearsal. So here we go. The ladies are back in the house and Keely goes downstairs in the studio to tell the twins her frustration with the girls of 702 and they're dancing. They're talking mad shit and laughing at them behind their back. And the fact that it's Keely of all the women in the house talking about them is infuriating to me. So I can only imagine how Irish feels. As she can hear them up top the stairs. Like her and Nivea are just sitting there listening to them talk about Irish and Lamisha. It is very convenient though how Irish just so happens to be up there and can hear them. I'm sure a producer was like, go over to the balcony. They're, they're talking about you. Wow, they talking mad shit, talking about camera three gonna be on them as they mess up. Shamari laughing too. Mm -mm -mm. With her multicolored wig that I'm still questioning. Like, it looks okay. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. How y'all feel about um, Shamari's multicolored wig? Up, oh, so here we go. 702 coming downstairs. Ooh, Iris look like she not playing. Like, she looking. Now, what's camera three? She not in Keely's face, but it looked like she bout to be in Keely's face. 
check her Irish. Check her. I, I didn't want to start this with you. Then don't talk shit about the girl behind her back to her own group members. Lord, so now here come the twins. I think this is twin two saying, well, let me just get out the way. We're only as strong as our weakest link. Wow. That's how she start the conversation. Even Nivea's like, come on, y'all. Like, don't do that. Like, I'm glad someone is sticking up for them. Like, thank you, Nivea. Like, Pam and Shamari should have followed suit. So, of course, the ladies have a problem with that because you're calling them weaker compared to everybody else. And they don't see that. They just see it as them telling them the hard truth of the matter. And even at the end of the day, their singing is a little scratchy and they can't dance. I mean, still respect the women, okay? And now we have the twins and Keely in the confessional together. Keely is up their ass right now. Poor Nivea. She's like, I, I really don't like this, y'all. <laughs> yeah, Nivea is getting increasingly annoyed by all of this. She's like, stop trying to highlight what everyone's bad at and let's help each other. So now Nivea is sticking up for Irish and the twins are just getting frustrated that Nivea is standing up for them. No one said the weakest. You just called the girl the weakest in the group. You did. <laughs> and it's not nice and it's not productive. And it's so hypocritical because as Aubrey said something about, oh, can we get some more up-tempo songs? They were the ones that got so offended by it. So you can critique everybody, but people can't critique you. Got it. And then it looked like she about to pop somebody. Like, I'm not the one. Like, somebody talk about me, I'm gonna just hit them in their face. The twins are not receiving it. They're just getting louder and buck for no reason. Shamari, I don't want to hear your take on it or what's supposed to happen because you were down in the studio laughing with the twins and sloppy ass Keely too. So as Nivea tries to calm the situation, get Lamisha upstairs and separate them, the twins are like, yeah, you need to go upstairs for your blood pressure get high. See? And then she turn around like, what you saying? It is chaos and yelling. I'm not sure if Nivea about to hit anybody. I'm not sure if Lamisha about to hit anybody. <laughs> um, tempers are flaring right now. And through all of this, the twins just keep doing that ya, ya, ya. They keep doing. They need they ass kicked. Like, it's no more time for words. It's like now they need they ass kicked. Lord, now we're talking about people's wigs. <laughs> now, Lamisha, I like you, but yeah, um... You shouldn't be talking about anybody's wigs, and the twins shouldn't be talking about anybody's wigs either. The twins look like they got 30 pounds on their head, and it's affecting the way they walk. And then this red wig you have, I mean, what in the Ronald McDonald? That's all I got to say. Again, we see the twins and Keely in the confessional. These tricks, like laughing, kikiing about it, saying they're going to snatch somebody's wig. I dare them to. I... They will get that work. Nivea again is trying to keep the peace and trying to tell the twins to chill out. Twin 2 tells Nivea, I wish you were vocal about other things. And that just ticks Nivea off even more. Twin 2 looks a fool. Her eyes are bulging out her skull. That bad wig on her head. She looks crazy. Nivea has had it now. Like now the twins going after her. She, she's like, I'm out. Because I can see she's about to beat a bitch ass. So it looks like she quit. She's going upstairs to her room. Uh, here go Pam standing up with her kumbaya bullshit. I mean, I'm not sure what they can say. They're not going to listen to you, Pam. I love that analogy, though. I got five fingers. My pinky don't do what my thumb do, but I need my pinky. <laughs> I love that analogy. Child, now Pam trying to figure out that she want to be here. Like, they are dropping like flies. I mean, it's the common denominator. It's these fucking twins. So shit has kind of calmed down a little bit. The twins go upstairs to Nivea's room. They knock on the door and they're saying they want her to stay. Pam and the twins are in her room. Nivea's like, I don't want to talk. Like she's packing. She is ready to go. So the twins keep talking to her. She's packing. She leaves the room and rush out. I don't want to talk. She's rushed down the stairs. She looks the camera dead ass in the face. Didn't I tell y'all? Like, wow, she's storming down the stairs. She even gets in the Keely's face. Keely, like, Keely don't want the smoke. She's like, whoa, what's, what's going on? What? That's what y'all get. Now, see what y'all did? Nivea was the coolest person, and now y'all make this girl leave the house. Keely is shook. She, she's backed up against the wall with a cup of wine, I'm sure, in her hand. 
and Nivea is just hollering throughout the house. We see Nivea headed to the SUV with her bags and her luggage. I, I think she gone. Yep, she gone. She's like, the best thing I could do is just flee the scene. I'm sure she's gonna catch a case or beat somebody ass if she stayed longer. And that is where the episode ends with Nivea leaving in that car. Wow, what an explosive ending, huh? And we see that Aubrey leaving the house didn't change anything because that same negative energy by the twins is there. They are just so despicable and disgusting to me. Like the attitude and the disrespect that they've given to all these women in the house. Like, I hope this Carlos King check is worth it because you two will never be successful musically, ever. Ever. Nobody wants to support you. And definitely they went live on Instagram. Their comments are off so no one can comment. Like they are really despicable and pernicious. I cannot stand them. And especially like our girl Nivea, we know that what she's been through and she just wanted a positive experience. Like seeing her leave the house in a full rage is really disappointing to me. And it has all to do with those twins. They are irredeemable to me. Like, they're deserving all the smoke they are getting online. Like, she was apologetic last night. Like, I was watching their live for a minute. And she was just like, yeah, the cameras. No, it's not the cameras. It's not the editing. Y'all said that. So stand into it now. Stand, stand behind whatever the camera captured of y'all being assholes. Ooh, I can't think of any better words to call y'all. I want to call y'all some see you next Tuesdays, but I'm not. I'm not. Like I said in the beginning, I'm stressed out watching this, so I can only imagine what it was like in that house. I would have went to jail. I would have went to jail. Anywho, y'all, we see the preview for next week. It looked like more people gonna be leaving the house, and it looked like blows might be had. Whew, wow, what a show. This is a train wreck. I don't even know what to say anymore, but like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on this crazy ass episode. Are, are anybody on the twin side at this point? Because if you are, you're an enabler. And fuck Keely. I'm going to just leave it with that. Bye, y'all.